guys, Janice and I are, are dividing and conquering this year. You're going to see my beloved bride there. And uh, I so wish I could be with you. I have a conflict and won't be there. But I'll tell you what, Zoom is the next best thing to be in person. But being in person is awesome. And I know you guys are going to have an absolute ball. I hope everyone here is going to be able to make that. And I hope to make the next one. Guys, we are going to uh, kick this thing off this morning with, with a warm welcome. I, I think you're in for a special treat. I'm a big fan of my son-in-law, Elisha Boberg. And today, he's going to bring a trainee to us. Um, I have really, really admired the way Katie and Elisha have, have uh, built an incredibly uh, incredibly rich uh, and fulfilling Neolife business. They, everybody builds this business in a different way, and, and that's what's beautiful about the business. You can. Uh, but before we jump into that training, I want to I ask you to celebrate with us just a moment real quick. March was ginormous. I don't know about you, but we... In 22 years of being on these products and having some sort of new life income, we got our biggest check, largest check last month. And it has been growing every single month this year to, I mean, to record levels. And I hope you're experiencing some growth in your business. And if you're not, I want to encourage you that there has never been a better time. And I mean this, with all the uncertainty in the world with all that's uh, going on out there as far as people talking interest rates, they're talking economy, they're talking jobs, they're talking chat GPT and what artificial intelligence is going to do to life and things. I want you to have a confidence that new life actually is one of those things, those businesses that will thrive in downturns, that actually will uptick, will actually meet the needs of people even more during those times as people that have been, you know, fat on a, a really high market that's all of a sudden deflated. Look at that. Group, Alan, you're seeing uh, March business over 8%. And I mean, and that's ginormous because Alan and Nicole have a huge business. To, to see that kind of growth in an organization that size is just a big deal. Big deal. So here's the deal. Here's why. It's because of you. It's because of each one of you doing what you do. Leading, loving, sharing. And, and we've seen some really cool move-ups. Guys, in the month of March, 184 people joined the wisdom builder team if you track this i mean it's crazy almost 200 new people that have the potential to have their life transformed through good nutrition and we know what that's like because we get to live it we get to experience it we get to have abundant energy we get to have mental clarity we get to have health we don't have to worry about all the other stuff i was literally at a meeting the other day and somebody's like oh i can't shake your hand I can't have five you know i'm sick and i said you know don't worry about it don't worry about it. I said, I'm not a susceptible host, baby. You know, you can have germs all you want. I'm not a susceptible host, right? You got to have both to get sick. And I, I thank God that I never fear. Anyways, 184 people that got introduced by you guys on our team and that said yes. You know, how many did we ask that didn't say yes yet? I always think of that number and I go, man, you know, because I know it wasn't that we asked 184 and all 184 said yes. Maybe we asked 800, maybe we asked a thousand. And how many of those are gonna come in this month and have their life transformed? It's just cool to think about 24 individuals joined our team as promoters. They said, okay, not only do we want health transformation, but we think we can help others. We're confident that this can be a solution. So um, really cool, a couple step-ups we wanna recognize. First of all, Christy Bloom. Uh, okay, this is, uh, these are uh, member step-ups. Christina Dillard, Brittany Hines, and Jordan, uh, Doyle Pearson, Joseph and Carrie Sanders. We just want to, again, celebrate them. Bumping up to member status, uh, some senior managers that stepped up in the month of March, Braden Blaine. Okay, man, I'm, man, are we not rejoicing with Braden, period, in everything God is doing in, in, a, in Braden's life? And, and Neil life is just, again, a part of it, right? Um, and then the, moving on, uh, right under Braden, we have Brandon and Janelle Magrum as senior manager and then executive manager, that spot that we, you know, it's kind of a no man's land in building your new life business is that executive manager, right? 2000 PV where you're halfway to a, a man, a director, you're halfway to, to just seeing all these things break loose in your business. And yet you're on the climb and Jesse Holbrook, uh, his hip dad. So just huge uh, round of applause and, and gratitude there. So guys, without any further ado, I want to hand this over to my son-in-law, Elisha. 
uh, for the training of the of the week here. Elisha, love you, man. Take it away. All right. Thank you, Chad. Thanks for letting me be a part of this call. It's quite an honor and a privilege. And it's actually kind of surreal as we're, you know, we're here in the month of April and we're getting ready for spring retreat. And I remember so vividly spring retreat 2017, um, having an, an aha moment at that point, Katie and I had been kind of chipping away at the business, um, for about a year. We'd been married just about a year and Katie had started it about six months prior to our, us getting married. And I came into our marriage with not much knowledge of Neo life or what was taking place. And we were chipping away and it was, it's crazy. Cause then Katie brought me to a spring retreat. She brought me to, uh, it was in Chihuahua, there in Chihuahua. And, and it's bizarre seeing Chad and Josh and Alan on this call scene. I, I, I think Gary and Shelly were at the spring retreat as well. And I was not opposed to Neil life at this point. You know, I was doing some in-home events with Katie and I was inviting some people here and there to uh, to watch shareneolife.com. But being at that 2017 Neil Life Spring Retreat, and being able to see Alan, Josh, Chad, Dwight was there. Um, for whatever reason, whatever I witnessed on the stage at that spring retreat just put me over the edge. And I can still remember where I was sitting in, in that audit. It wasn't really an auditorium, but in that um, kind of Grange type building, uh, that community center. And, uh, and thinking, okay, this, I am going to do this. And I'm so grateful for Alan and Chad and Dwight and Josh and everybody that's a part of this community because as anybody knows, there is no, there is literally no possible way to do this business on your own. You know, it's funny how in some industries, people could argue that you're you're a self-made, you know, people talk about a self-made millionaire or a self-made business owner, somebody that you know picked themselves up by their bootstraps and and made something of themselves. And that's literally impossible to ever claim that in this industry, because you need somebody pouring into you, you need an upline. And of course, you need a downline, you need people that are willing to catch the vision and build with you. And that's certainly the case for for Katie and me, it is, there is no way to have anything but like, humble gratitude, you know, humility, when we look at the Lord's provision and his graciousness in our life, and we say, boy, without Alan, without Josh, without Dwight, without Chad, it's all, it's all a gift. And then we, and then we look at our downline and we look at Jeff, Jeff and Julie Stevens. We look at so many people here, Annie, you know, and I see Callie and I'm thinking, boy, we literally, and I'm sure there's other people that I can't see as well. We go, man, thank you, Lord, because it is just a hundred percent a gift. And then I'm going to back you up and kind of show you some of the things that, that we did in order to get to this place. But again, there is, there is no way to get around the fact that you need people in this business, people to pour into you and then you pouring into people. And, uh, and so again, I go back to that event in, in 2017 and uh, some things that I kind of want to talk about today are, are, and I'm sure Chad's talked about this. I'm sure Alan's, I'm sure many people have talked about this, but protecting your confidence, because just because I had that aha moment in 2017 does not mean it was smooth sailing for Katie and I from that point forward. And I think one thing that I'm really grateful that Katie and I did there in 2017, we were at spring retreat and we said, we want to do this. At that point, we had just made it to director and we really wanted to get to world team because that's where the trips are at. You know, you get the, the bigger car bonus and there's all these incentives. And we thought if we could just get to world team, that would be, that would make our life, that would be a big game changer in our life. And it's crazy when we go back and at this time we were using the three daily success habits and there was success team calls on a weekly basis. But something that Katie and I did from that point forward is we started being so intentional at what we are allowing into our head. Because I don't know if anybody here has ever experienced a negative reaction or response from somebody when you've presented Neo life to them. Because that certainly what happened to Katie and myself. And because we had been working at this for enough time, we had been in this for a year, we knew that was baked into the equation. When we looked at where we were sitting there in Chihuahua, Washington, and where we wanted to be, we knew that from where we were at to where we wanted to be, there was going to be tons of negativity, there was going to be tons of no's, there was going to be ton of op tons of opposition, and our confidence was going to be under attack really on a regular basis unless we were extremely intentional 
uh, putting a hedge of protection around it in, in very practical ways. And so we made that decision there at, at Chawila. We got, we both got out our phones. We both had smartphones at the time. And we were, we were, okay, what podcast are you getting rid of? What podcast are you adding to your phone? I said, who are we following right now on Instagram? Okay. You know, if you, if you feel bad deleting people on Instagram or, you know, whatever it is, unfriend them, you can mute them. You can silence their notifications. And then knowing, here's another thing too. I think Katie and I were very aware of the people, because here's the deal. Has anybody brought this up to a family member and received negative feedback? I know that was the case. I mean, I sit here and I can't tell you how blessed we were to have Katie's family, you know, so they were building right, right there with us, or they were ahead of us, you know, confident in this program. So we could leverage their confidence and build off of that and talk about it with them. That was a place of confidence. But on my side of the family, it was the complete opposite. That we could not even mention, we could not breathe the word neolife without there being snarky negative remarks about us, about fill in the blank with what we are trying to do with our family relationships and selling them these, you know, snakeskin oils and trying to get rich off of our family. And, and so it was polar opposites there. And, and again, I'm grateful that we had the one side of the family that was supportive and we really, really leaned heavily on that. But on my side of the family, it was the complete opposite. And this is something that we learned early on is I think it's really easy to take this. Okay, we're committed. We're going to take this to everybody, right? Because every everybody here agrees this would be beneficial for everyone, for everybody in the world. If they took these vitamins and if they're interested in the business, they too can experience a, a successful business as well. But here's the deal. We can't take it to everybody immediately. And I think we were extremely realistic with ourselves at to where we were at in our confidence, where we were at in our business. And we said, okay, we're not going to talk to certain people about this. Okay. And th this is something that you might say, what are you talking about? We need to talk to everybody about this. And I go, eventually, I think that should be the goal. But I think you know, need to know where you're at and who it is that's going to tear you down and build you up. And no, you know, the, the, I'm not going to try to equate this to the gospel, but in the gospel says, don't cast your pearls before swine. I'm also not going to compare my family to swine, but, you know, I just kind of did in both those scenarios, you know, but no, the, the, the reality is with this, there are people that you, if you know ahead of time, hey, if I mention Neolife, all they're going to do is tear me down and tear me down and tear me down. Why would you do that to yourself? You know, and, and I think Katie and I realized that, hey, there are a lot of people in the world besides my family. There are a lot of people in the world besides those couple of people at our church that are scoffers and mockers and that just want, want to see us fail. So let's do our best to not ever bring this up around those people. In fact, I'm not even going to wear my Neolife shirt when I'm at my family. I'm not going to give them the opportunity to do this. And again, you're thinking, what are we, we're supposed to share this with everybody? And here's the deal. All those people eventually started buying Neolife. That's that's the fun punchline. Isn't that fun? You know, that years later, my family saying, hey, I, I heard, you know, Neolife salmon oils, you know, they tested for this many toxins. And okay, we're just gonna do the salmon oil. Okay, no, we don't want, we don't want to sign up. No, we don't want to do the club thing, just the salmon oil. And then next thing you know, they're club members and they're buying buying many, many products. But I say that all to say the reason we are intentional is because my father-in-law Chad had from the very beginning talked about an entrepreneur's number one priority. And he's probably said it on here before. And he says it quarter in and quarter out when he's coaching people far more successful than I'll ever be. And he says, your number one priority, and this goes for everybody here because we're all entrepreneurs. Your number one priority is to protect your confidence. If you guys do, if we do not have confidence, there is zero activity that we're going to see in our business. There's zero action that we're going to be taking. And without action or activity, we're going to see zero growth in our business. And even while Katie and I were not experiencing success for ourselves in this business, we knew that we needed confidence in order to see success in this business. And so when we were creating our lists of people to reach out to for Neolife, to send Facebook messages to or to send text messages to, we were extremely thoughtful and intentional about, hey, is this interaction, is this conversation going to be detrimental to our confidence? Because I still remember the first five text messages I sent about Neela Life. And, and I sent them to, you know, and again, I'm not saying this is bad advice, but this is oftentimes what happens. You send them to the people closest to you. The problem is the people closest to you have the most effect on your confidence, on your self-esteem. 
Okay, so I think of my mentors. I sent it to, to John Dalrymple, Joe Stout. I sent it to my brother, Joby. You know, I sent it to Steve Wool. And, and all these guys, they, they were not mean to me, but boy, were they snarky. Okay, so I've got these guys that I look up to and they come back. Don't do it, man. Don't, don't go down that road. Hey, no, there's, th these are a dime a dozen, you know, don't th these pyramid schemes, blah, 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 blah. And, and I thought, what am I doing? And again, this is part of the learning curve. Okay. This is inevitable in this business. But the reason I say that is that that confidence that we, that is so precious to us as entrepreneurs cannot be taken for granted. And it doesn't simply come. Okay. Here's, this is the other thing too, as, as Chad, as I'm sure has talked about, the most successful people in the world, if they're not proactive in protecting their confidence, will live in a place of insecurity, of regret, of feeling insufficient. This isn't something that just automatically comes because you've achieved a certain level of status or of success in any field. And so learning to protect your confidence early and often, even before you feel like you're even credible of, to have confidence, is of the utmost importance in this industry and in any industry. And it's something that Katie and I decided to do as soon as possible. So I go back to those practical things when we were sitting there in Chihuahua at spring retreat and we both said, okay, are we going to do this? And we said, and I said, yes. And, and we knew what that meant. I think everybody knows what that means to themselves. You know, at this point I was pursuing real estate. I was, I was working at a restaurant. I thought real estate was going to be you know, something that, that was going to be my big money maker. And then I saw these people up on stage that were far more successful in real estate that I had even ever aspired to be. And they're saying, man, I wish I would have poured into Neo life instead of real estate. And I thought, okay, well, there you go. I think I'm going to pour into Neo life. And so Katie and I got together. We said, we're going to do this. And we did those practical things. We found any podcasts that support this framework of thinking, the industry, whether that's from a health and wellness standpoint or whether it's from a business standpoint, a network marketing standpoint that validated what we had chosen to, to pursue and to put our time into. We, we signed up for any call, anything Alan was offering, Josh was offering, any event that was available. We wanted to, we wanted to be there because we've all heard it said staying close to the fire is of the utmost importance, calls like this. And then I, I mentioned it earlier, all the, all the sounds that are so... Um, that can be so destructive through social media, through through the news outlets, through even family relationships. And, and again, I don't don't hear me saying I totally shut down my family relationships. No, I nurtured those relationships. They're they're near and dear to me. I love them more, love them so much. You know, they're the closest relationships in my life. But I, I decided to really um, be conscientious about what I would talk to about them and what I would bring up at those family dinners and at those holidays because I knew I needed to protect my my brain right here. So when you're at this place of starting, like I said, Katie and I had a few reps under our belt. We had done some in-home events. We had sent the invitation out and people had watched it, but we didn't really have our own experience to draw from when it came to confidence, right? When, when people say, hey, I mean, I, you, you talk to Alan now and, and I can say that I'm in this place as well. People bring up, they say, hey, I was looking at, you know, the ingredients and in this synthetic that, and I think it's going to have this effect on my my thing and neo life has this you guys are selling poison that that would wreck me you know that I, this is early on i'm thinking oh i'm done we're done with this katie this is not going to work we this is not going to work at all you hear that now and there's not like there's literally nothing anybody can say about the neo life products that shakes my confidence in them right now or in it as an industry They're like it just doesn't even resonate with me but that was not the case back in 2017 when we had made this commitment to, to start pursuing this business. And some of you might be there now where you're feeling like, boy, it doesn't take much questioning from a prospect to get me really out of this place of, of feeling secure in, in Neo life. And so what I needed to do is I needed to leverage somebody else's confidence because I didn't have it from my own experience. You know, I'm, maybe Chad's talked about the four C's, the confidence that comes from that commitment or uh, yeah, commitment and then courage and then how, help me out here. Can you lip it to me? What's after that? Commitment. Capability. Courage. Commit, capability. Courage. Capability. And confidence. then the confidence. That's right. Exactly. And so that's a confidence that we all want and that we can all get. But, but you have to do it through that commitment, the, the courage, the capability, and then comes that confidence. So we, Katie and I had made the commitment. And I think we were growing in our courage, but that we straight up didn't have the capability that Alan had or that Josh had or that Marjorie and Lawrence had, or that Dwight had. 
We hadn't experienced that for ourselves yet. And so we leaned heavily on the confidence of others, on the experience of others, on the success of others. We said, boy, that's not mine personally right now, but it's theirs. And I'm going to get as close to them as I can. I'm going to turn my problem solving brain off and just listen to their problem solving brain. And it's, it's, it's almost embarrassing in retrospect to say this, but I, there for a season, told myself, I, I'm not going to trust any of my instincts. I'm going to trust all of Alan's instincts, or I'm going to trust all of Dwight's instincts or Josh's instincts, because where have my instincts gotten me? Not nearly to the place where, where I see them, and I, I see them right there. And so if they say this is how I should respond to this prospect, I'm going to respond to this prospect. In fact, go ahead and text it to me. I'll copy and paste. You know, I'll change your name out and I'll put my name in there. And that's what I'm going to do. So when I say I leveraged their confidence, I literally leveraged their verbiage. I leveraged their stories. I leveraged all of their research that they had done and all the opposition that they had seen and the counters that they had done. And over time, what happened? I started having experiences of my own, right? And, and you talk about those four C's that I had committed. I was growing in courage through hearing Alan's success stories, Josh's, other people's success stories. And then all of a sudden the capabilities were mine. And I was thinking, you know what? Yeah, Alan and Josh, these guys are successful, of course. I could copy them, paste their, their quotes all day and see success. But I'm starting to see it for myself. I just responded in my own words and they liked that. And then I'm growing in confidence for myself. And then I'm, all of a sudden I'm telling people, you know what? You could actually respond like this. And now this is my confidence. This is confidence coming from my experience, from my capabilities, from the courage that Katie and I have taken. Because this here's the deal. You do in-home events, you do live webinars, you're just going to get reps in. And when you're in there knowing, hey, there is no winning or losing here. You know, if somebody signs up, that's great. Otherwise, it's experience, you know, and I'm learning and I'm growing. And this is a long game. And, and I know it's been said on this call probably, but there's no unrealistic goals, just unrealistic deadlines. And when you've got that attitude of patience saying, hey, and that's something that really helped me at the spring retreat. I, I can't remember. Let's see. I was 20. I guess it would have been 27 or 28. And I saw these guys 10 and 15 and 20 years, you know, older than me saying, this is something worthy pouring into. And I thought, well, boy, here they are 15 years down the road. If I start now, I've got time and, and, you know, we'll take care of the bills in the meantime, but this is something worth pouring into right now. And it might take some time. It might be a slow burn, but I'm curious, you know, Chad or Alan, Josh, anybody in this, this experienced growth in Neo life. Maybe there was times where you didn't hit benchmarks as soon as you wanted to, you know, where you're thinking, boy, I was, I was going to hit this in a year. And instead, here I am six years later, just now hitting this title. Now, here's the deal. Does that make that title less sweet? Do you think it wasn't worth getting it because I didn't get it in that timeline that I thought I was going to get it? I know that's certainly the case for me. We were sitting there at spring retreat and we said, we want to hit one Ruby. We were not even Sapphire yet. So we want to hit one Ruby by 2020. And this is 2017. Okay. And so we said, okay, we got about two and a half years to hit one Ruby. Now here's the deal. We did not hit one Ruby by 2020, but we did hit one Ruby in 2022. I tell you what, that does not make that. I do not regret not succeeding in 2020. Does that make sense? It's not like what a failure. We didn't hit this. And so going back to that line, there's no unrealistic goals, just unrealistic deadlines. And so if you're setting a goal on something, it's, it should be worth achieving regardless of whether or not you do it in your allotted time frame that you thought is possible or, or not. And I, and I think that's what's so great about Neil Life is that as you grow in this business and as you grow in your capabilities, you realize, boy, half of, the, half of the reward, maybe more of the reward is just the experience of growing. Do we want the check to grow? Absolutely. Chad just talked about how rewarding it is to see his check grow throughout these years. Do you want to see testimonies in people's lives through health transformations? Absolutely. But even in 2020, when Katie and I were sitting there looking at each other and say, well, man, remember we said we were going to hit one Ruby? We didn't do it. We had no regrets because setting that goal enabled us to take action and it drove us to take action, which then led to self-development. It led to us hit, hitting Sapphire. You know, if we wouldn't have said one Ruby by, by 2020, we probably not would have not hit Sapphire and been, you know, in Hawaii and Can Cancun with everybody enjoying those times when we, when we were enjoying those times. So I say that to say, 
when you make that commitment and you say, this is going to be a slow burn on some levels, there's going to be seasons of harvest. There's going to be seasons that just all you feel like you're doing is planting seeds. But this is a business that's worth investing into regardless of what your time, you, you think your time frame is. I think it is good to set timelines and deadlines because that can force you to take action. But the goal should be good enough and, and something that excites you enough so that even if you surpass that deadline and then you hit that goal two years down the road, five years down the road, that's not a failure. You're thinking, boy, I'm glad I set that earlier deadline because here I am experiencing the fruit of the reward right here. So I go back to the confidence and the necessity to not only protect your confidence, but then before you even feel like you have confidence, leverage someone else's confidence. And that's something that Katie and I did early and often with anybody that would be willing to just like let, lend their confidence to us. You know, whether that, and this is what's so crazy is the, is the generosity in this business. We had Dwight Johnson showing up at events that we would be putting on or Chad showing up at events that we'd put on, same with Alan and Josh. And we're saying, okay, we'll invite, we'll invite, invite, invite. Can you be there? And then eventually we thought, you know what? I think we can learn how to go through these slides. We can hit the next slide button and share it for ourselves. And then we're doing it in ourselves. And then all of a sudden we've got that capability for ourselves and we're growing in that confidence for ourselves. Now here's the deal with confidence. And I, and I already kind of said this briefly, this doesn't ever end. You know, like I said, I, I could not be happier with, with what the Lord's provided for us in Neo life and even in our other ventures and the life that we have. And yet the number one thing that is under attack the most is my confidence. As I've grown, the number one thing that feels like that's under great attack and there's, there's a threat to is, is my confidence. And, and I'm sure Josh could agree to this or Alan, as you grow, do you, does your skin grow thicker? Absolutely. Do you become, you know, I guess, totally a defense, a big defense against confidence. That's not how it works. You need to continually, as you grow, as your horizon grows, growing in these skill sets to protect your confidence. And, and I say that even Katie and I today, we'll sit down and, and even in how the way we're building our business now, we hear a lot of feedback. Okay. So I go from messaging 12 people a day. That was Katie and I's goal. And of course, you know, when you're sending direct messages, nine, nine of those people are not even going to get back to you that month, or they're not going to get back the first 10 times. And then out of the three people to get back, you know, two of them are going to probably say, hmm, maybe, you know, oh, God, I don't know. And then one of them's probably going to say something negative. So you're thinking, boy, I'm going to get some negative here. Well, you start growing in that and you're, as you grow in your success, you're going to grow in the negative feedback. And so you have to choose now to tune out the negativity. And I know that there is so much content out there about, you know, self positive self talk and about, you know, protecting your brain and protecting your mind. And, but I don't think there could actually be too much. But I will say this I think that we can all do a lot better job about being practical on how we're doing this. Okay. You're not putting your heads in the cloud and saying, I'm going to create my own reality that's not even reality. Okay. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you get to choose the truth that you can dwell, dwell on. And Chad Johnson has talked a lot about the Philippians 4 mindset. And he's even talked about being able to use that filter where you can, you can, this is crazy. You can choose your past. You can choose the past experiences to dwell on. You know, because we've all got past experiences and failures that we could dwell on. Or we could choose to look at our past through a lens of what went well of what we learned through those failures. And as time goes on, I'm realizing, man, the only thing that builds success in this business is taking action, right? Like there is no growth in this business without action, without talking to people, without inviting them, without sharing you know, the three daily success habits, taking the product, sharing the product, developing yourself. And the number one thing that would keep you from taking action is a lack of confidence or is when your confidence is in a low place. And, and like I said, from that point forward, 2017, and it's not that we did this perfectly because we've all done it before where, you know, you're, you're so in the, you're so in the game, you're so in Neo life. And then you, you hear this podcast and somebody makes a, sn a snarky remark about that industry, you know, about network marketing. You're thinking, boy, is this a dumb thing? And then you've got to go back to that place of confidence and saying, who am I allowing to listen to and, and build me up? in this business. And so I just want to leave you with that. That's really all I had to share today. You guys, I don't know how long I was supposed to go, but I just wanted to talk and Hey, there's Dwight. Good seeing Dwight on here. Barely recognized him. Um, and I think it is really fun timing um, as we're approaching spring retreat 
the when you have a breakthrough, don't just revel in it. You know, do you guys like feeling emotional highs? I do. Emotional highs are really fun. And I think so often we'll go to an event or we'll be on a call, I'll be on a call and you get pumped up, right? You're like, boy, this is so great. And I used to just revel in that feeling. I'm like, wow, this was what success feels like. I'm really excited right now. But reveling in success is actually not success, okay? Reveling in this feeling of I'm going to do well is not doing well. And I go back to Katie and I, in that moment of clarity, we said, oh my word, this is what we're going to do. We took some sort of action. And more than that, we didn't just take action. We took action in something that was going to have effect go going on in months forward. We were deleting, deleting, or not deleting, but, you know, muting people on social media. We were deleting podcasts that we were listening to. We were adding podcasts. We are download. We are ordering books. Say, boy, get that. Get all those books coming to our house. We are downloading audio books. Okay. We, so take action when you are in those moments of inspiration that has a lot longer effect than just that moment of reveling and being around a bunch of like-minded people. Anyways, yeah. that's all I've got for you guys. So good, Elisha. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love, love, love this. I, I see. I love all the comments over here. And again, appreciate it so much. Guys, again, our mindset matters immensely. It always does. It always will. And Elisha, I love that you mentioned Philippians 4, 8. I mean, there's no more powerful truth in scripture for me to remind me how to think and how to retain that confidence. Um, guys, I want to, Alan, you had a comment about kind of answering a comment in the, uh, in the chat. Are you able to address that or do you, what do you want yeah. to do time? Yeah, real quick. I'll just do it. I'll do yeah. it real quick. First of all, Elisha. Oh man, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Needed by all of us, myself included. So thank you for obviously taking time to prepare and deliver an incredible message. We all need to hear. Can't wait to get this posted. We should tag all of our team in this once it gets posted in Wisdom Builders Facebook group later today. Real quick, Ruth asked a great question that ties right into this. I wanted to address her question essentially was, what am I? What is my identity? When people, not who she is in Christ, but what is my, my job, my business? Like, who am I as a neolife person? When people say, what do you do? What do you say? And I just want to address that because if, you know, it's like, if you get back on your heels, like in boxing, as soon as you lose your balance or in any martial art, you lose your balance, you're not in a good place. We're not in a good place as soon as we lose our confidence, just as Elisha did such a great job talking about. And when the first question is, what do you do? And your confidence drops because you get that gut wrench because you don't really have an answer. You've already lost. I mean, you're already losing. You haven't lost. You're already losing. Now you got an uphill battle to fight emotionally, mentally. It's not a place to start from. So take the time to apply these things that Elisha was talking about. And, and very, it's very, very important that you know who you are and what you do. And I'll make it real simple. I love to say, no matter what you want to say, I love to say my first words out of my mouth are I'm glad you asked. I have the best job on the planet. I think everyone could probably, I mean, I'll say whatever you want. For those of you that feel comfortable, stick with what you're doing. For those of you like Ruth that are going, get help me out. I, I'm glad you asked. I have the best job on the planet. Start with positive, start with a smile, start with energy. And then you can say, I get to help people blank. My business gets to help people blank. And you say what you want to say. I know what I say. You can say, I have the best job on the planet. I get to help people make money from anywhere, from their phones, impactful income. I get to help people lose weight. I'll, it depends who I'm looking at. It depends who I'm talking to. It depends on what the context was of the conversation leading up to the point they asked me. But I've got a few different answers I can give, and they're all true because we all do different things in our business, right? But I have the best job on the planet. I'm so glad you asked. I get to, and say it with confidence, I get to help people lose weight. I get to help people prevent disease. I get to help people live healthy, healthier, happier lives. I get to help people create lifestyles of their dreams. Just have one that is your go-to, and then you can build others from there you know, depending on who you're talking to and where the conversation oh. goes, like I would do now. And the last thing I will say is I read something the other day. It says Ferrari doesn't sell cars. Ferrari sells status. It said um, Rolex doesn't sell watches. They sell luxury. Nike doesn't sell shoes. They sell performance. And we need to get better at selling benefits of the products, not the features of the products. And the same goes to that question. What do you do? sell the benefits of what you do, not what you do. That's all. Thank you, Elisha. Pure gold, guys. I, again, 
what a blessing to be able to be here with you guys. I know we went a click long, but it was worth every single moment of it. Thank you for plugging in here. We'll be back next Friday. And again, world team, I mean, not world team, spring retreat. It's kicking okay. off, right? Please, Josh. Can I say one quick thing? Oh, that was incredible. Please. Amazing. And I just wanted to say that I love how your son-in-law, Elijah, how he has a balanced life. The spokes are balanced. I've been around him and Katie. I love their approach to life and success and all that. With that said, wouldn't surprise me one bit to see him keep his life balanced and keep building, building, building and surpassing every one of your clients one day down the road, even though, you know, he humbly said that, that he may never be that successful, but I kind of beg to differ, but I sure like how balanced he is. Don't you? I couldn't be more grateful. Couldn't be more grateful. I love it. I believe in these two. I believe in all you guys, guys. I appreciate you all being here. And I, I'm excited about what's in front of us, guys. We're, we live in an ocean right now of opportunity. Go do it. Have an awesome week. Bless you all.